the southwest monsoon struck Sri Lanka. It'll go on raining like this on and off for the next four months. Although that can cause chaos here, at least we're never short of water. But other places are desperately dry, and some people claim to solve that problem with a strange power. Can people really find water with a divining rod? This British colonel is convinced that dowsing works. With just a forked twig, he found water for a town of 10,000 people. This American prospector douses for oil. This is how it works right here. And I can show you the proof. It's good oil. His oil wells have brought him millions of dollars. What secret lies in the diviner's hands? Mysteries from the files of Arthur C. Clarke, scientist, writer, and visionary. The scientist who invented the communication satellite, the writer of 2010. And now, in retreat in Sri Lanka, the visionary who ponders the riddles of this and other worlds. There's one part of Sri Lanka that the monsoon rains often miss, and that's the dry zone here in the southeast. So this is the sort of place where you'll meet water diviners or dowsers who claim to find underground water with nothing more than a bent twig. Around the world, some dowsers claim not only to find water, but also precious metals and even oil. Nathan McDowell is a professional oil dowser. In his Cadillac, he cruises the countryside of Illinois, prospecting from the driving seat. When the rod twitches, wife Marge has to steer. I have my wife out there and to hold the wheel while I'm driving. And uh, give me a little scare once in a while. <laughs> Just don't go too fast now. That's the way we do it. Yeah, it's working real good here. Clayton claims dowsing rods should work for anyone. Most people they'll work for. The fellow I got them from said if they didn't work for you, uh, you were dead. So <laughs> It still won't work for me. <laughs> so, yeah. It certainly seems to work for Clayton. He claims 90% of the wells he dowses yield oil, far above the success rate of his more conventional rivals. The fields of Edwards County, Illinois, are alive with his pump jacks, and oil companies clamor to hire him. I doused all these wells over here for maybe oil company, and staked their locations for them. One of Clayton's most spectacular finds was in the grounds of Edwards County High School. It's been running short of cash. Principal Bob Wallace. Money is very short this year. Programs have been cut. A lot of our equipment has been used for more years than it actually should. We used to depreciate our books in five years, and now then we're going on more like a seven or eight year program. Clayton offered to help out. He doused the school grounds, and he soon struck pay dirt right next to the playing fields. They decided we had oil, and uh, he drilled this well, and we got one. The school well is producing 110 barrels a day, and the school will get one-eighth of the revenue. We imagine about uh, three or four hundred dollars a day, and so you multiply that by 365, that's going to be a good piece of change. We love it. Dowsing is known locally as witching. Headmasters are usually skeptical of such things. As an academic, I feel it hard to believe that oil can be found by witching and all that. But it's been very successful, and with the money we're getting, it's going to make a hell of a difference in our school. <laughs> hey! What did our know how to get you? Come down there! Clayton's latest well is being brought in. The drilling mud has been cleared with acid, and the first oil is coming to the surface. Clayton sinks more than 30 holes a year, all discovered by dowsing. 
almost all produce top quality oil. Clayton's success has amazed conventional geologists like Paul Mullinax. The results speak for themselves. Uh, he has a better success ratio than almost anyone that I know of in this area. About uh, 75 percent of, of all the wells he's drilled have been uh, commercial producers. Clayton's dowsing rod, which he calls his bug, has brought him a stud full of fine trotting horses, a profitable sideline. But I really make my money out of oil. And the reason I do is because I use this bug all the time to find the oil. In West Germany, the British Army of the Rhine has also benefited from a dowser's skills. It's commanded from JHQ Rheindahlen, a town of 10,000 people near Munchen Gladbach. Construction of the base began in 1952. In charge was Colonel Harry Grattan of the Royal Engineers. Colonel Grattan is now retired. But whenever he returns to the base he built, his first visit is to the scene of a personal triumph, the Army Waterworks. Thank you. Hello, Hello Herr Ulrich. Pleased to meet Very you. Nice to see you again. Welcome in Rheindahlen. Today, the works provide all the headquarters needs. But water was a problem when Harry Grattan was planning the base. Into the to supply Rheindahlen's schools, offices, living quarters and barracks, he needed at least 700,000 gallons a day. Local German waterworks offered a supply, but Grattan knew this would be expensive and was doubtful about its quality. Some of it was very hard, up to 36 degrees of hardness, and it wasn't a water which we cared for, either for, for drinking or shaving or boiler houses or pipes or anything. So the colonel cut a divining rod. He already knew there was one small well of good water on the headquarters site. Something's dragging it down. But could he really find enough for an army? Naturally, I'd uh, consulted with the German geologists as to the lie of the land here and what they thought about the prospect of water. And uh, they were reasonably impressed by the first findings that we made on the headquarters site itself. But there rather gloomy uh, prognostication was that uh, this was quite a small and, and insignificant find and that the line of the Schwarm stream, which is this, would uh, be the western end of the water table. However, I wasn't satisfied, so I came out here and uh, doused it in these woods, through these woods, and I went across the field, still finding water, until it suddenly stopped. By now, Colonel Grattan was in the shadow of the German waterworks at Waldniel, so close that his dreams of an independent supply seemed impossible. But he still hoped there was a division between the two fields of water. To his gratification, he found there was. He pinpointed it by dowsing from the German side. There's a strong indication here, which is from the field of water which supplies the Waldniel waterworks. For a long time, I couldn't find the division. So I went on like this, and as you see now, it's still going down. On the, this is the Waldniel side. And, uh, ah, oh. yeah, it's not going down. Slack, quite slack. For a few paces here, there's absolutely no pull on the rod. It's quite slack. There's, there, there's nothing here. And then, if I go on, and there it is. Very strong pull. Now that's the beginning of the uh, water bearing area which I had discovered. They did miss our patch. That's the extraordinary thing. And they missed it 
by so little. As you see, their waterworks are right on the very edge of our area. Thirty years on, the vast Rhindalen Bay still relies on the secure and independent supply found by Harry Grattan. The savings on German water rates run into millions of pounds. There's enough for 10,000 people with plenty to spare. For Colonel Grattan, dowsing has a simple explanation. It's called water divining and there is in it an element of uh, the divine, if you like to think of it like that. You are asking to find something and some power gives you the power to find it. And that's I, how I prefer to believe it. Uh, there, are, there are more things in heaven and earth ratio than are dreamt of in our philosophy. Danville, Vermont. In this small American town, everyone learns the mysteries of divining from an early age. In the place that calls itself the dowsing capital of the world, it's on the school curriculum. And everybody sit down. Okay, now, all you're doing with dowsing rods is tuning in like a radio, and you're making yourself into a radio. It's very, very simple. When you are dowsing, you're trying to tune your antenna to something that you don't know the answer to. Yes. Patrick is very good at finding water. Good. <laughs> very good. Danville's annual dowsing convention brings people thousands of miles to brush up techniques and to check out the latest equipment. And with this instrument, we can measure someone's aura by coming in on a victim where the aura comes out, it bends out. She's putting out about eight inches of energy from her head at a time. The dowsers believe the village green is riddled with underground streams waiting to be detected. Whoops, now we're over one right here. Now let's re-straighten them out again. All right, you're over another one now. See, those are beginning to work for you. Whether they use pendulums or rods, convention delegates believe they can find almost anything. I was laying flooring boards in the attic of our house. I had driven probably a couple of thousand nails, put much flooring down, and suddenly the, the phone lines were uh, not working. And we guessed that uh, we had driven a nail through the phone. But I started to check out each nail using a voltmeter, and I found that there were an awful lot of nails there. So I went and got the dowsing rods instead, and I narrowed it down to an area of probably three foot square. So without telling my wife, I asked her to do it, and she confirmed that it was in the same three foot area. But she used a pendulum to go over all the nails in there, and she picked the nail, and we circled it with a pencil, and went and got the voltmeter, and touching the nail and ground, we had 60 volts on there. We pulled the nail and the phone system went back to normal. Dowsers are so confident of their powers that they seldom bother to ask the fundamental question. Are they just lucky or is there a scientific explanation? My friend, the magician, James Randi, tried to find the answer. In 1980, he went to Australia to challenge the diviners of the outback. $50,000 were on offer to anyone who could unfailingly find water and metal buried in the test area. The dowsers were certain they'd scoop the prize. It'll be the easiest day's divining I've ever had if, uh, if the money comes forward. The value is roughly... First they look for metal. Lumps of gold and brass were hidden in one of ten boxes. The dowsers task was to say which box contained the metal. But in 61 tries, they found it only four times. When the metal tests were over, the water was turned on. Eleven dowsers paced the field. Hidden in the ground below were ten pipes. The dowsers had to detect which one the water was flowing through. By chance alone, they had to be right 10% of the time. But the dowsers boasted they'd score at least 80% success.
At the end of the day, the diviners gathered to hear the water results from scrutineer the Reverend Ted Knoffs. Out of a total of uh, 50 tries, there were only 11 successful attempts, which was 22%. Uh, the total of everything, that is to say the brass, the gold, and the water, uh, meant 111 tries were undertaken. There were um, a total of 15 successful and that makes approximately uh, a percentage of 12%. So the result was just a little over the 10%. It would seem to indicate that dowsing as a force simply does not exist except in the imagination and in, in wishful thinking of the people who try it. What are we to make of Randy's test for dowsing? The experiment was well designed, but I don't quite agree with his conclusions. The test for water and the test for metal were entirely separate experiments. He shouldn't have combined the results. The dowsers were hopeless at finding metals. They'd have done much better if they'd merely guessed. But the results for water are rather impressive. By chance alone, the dowsers should have been right 10% of the time. Their actual score was 22%. The odds are 100 to 1 against that happening by chance. So the dowsers were quite good at locating water. They weren't as infallible as they claimed to be, but they were distinctly better than Randy admits. I've been able to find only one experiment that suggests how dowsing may actually work. On the campus of Utah State University at Logan, Professor Dwayne Chadwick is preparing the ground for the latest in a series of dowsing tests. He hopes to establish a connection between dowsing reactions and the Earth's magnetic field, using student volunteers hijacked on their way to classes. Before the test begins, Chadwick measures the magnetic field every foot along the path. Then he buries a piece of wire coat hanger in the snow, which will cause a distinct change, a distortion in the Earth's magnetic field. Really hard. The tests are designed to discover whether dowsers can detect changes in the Earth's magnetic field, like the one caused by the coat hanger. Any movement of the rods, a dowsing reaction, is carefully recorded. Chadwick got the idea from a local newspaper story. I saw something that made me really wonder. Two boys fell through the ice on the Snake River and were drowned. The search party couldn't find them, and a dowser came along and located them after the search party had given up. That got me thinking, there must be some scientific basis on which that might work, because here's a whole river of water, obviously it wasn't the water. And uh, I, I postulated that the skates would distort the Earth's magnetic field. Underground water also causes such distortions. Perhaps dowsers can tune into them. This might explain the basis of dowsing, but why should the rods twitch? I postulated again that here we have a, the human body, which is a really a conductor of electricity. And as you cut the magnetic field, this causes micro voltages to be induced into the, the tissues, the muscles. That shortens the muscle. It causes a slight misalignment of the hands, subconsciously, not consciously, and causes a dowsing response. In a previous test, students doused a 60-foot long path. Unknown to them, Chadwick had buried a piece of wire coat hanger at a spot 26 feet along it. The dowsing reactions were grouped in bunches, especially over the wire. 23 out of 25 people got a reaction within three feet of that spot. And statistically, of course, that's, you could break the bank at Monte Carlo with those kind of odds. <laughs> And we did show that they tended to get reactions where the magnetic field is changing. The magnetic field is changing most where the graph is steepest. And that's where the dowsing reactions are bunched. Based on our, uh, our statistical evidence, I think there is a, prop a possibility that this is, the, this is the mechanism by which the dowsing reaction occurs. In Carmel Valley, California, the telephone company has a dowser on call 
I uh, just turned off Highway 1. I'm eastbound on Cardinal Valley Road. Don't we got keep trouble at the old Dunaway Ranch. The buried service wire and underground wires seem to have gone bad. Um, is that that one right by Mid Valley? That's the one. You can go out there and locate the underground facility. Engineer Tom Harmon had trouble convincing his boss. When I first heard that Tom could find lines using copper rods, I just sort of laughed and chuckled and said, sure until he had me do it and taught me how to do it and then you just have to believe it <laughs> we encourage all of our employees to either learn it and not laugh about it but try to use it tom's job is to find and fix faulty telephone lines he's sure that this one will present no problems right here i think we'll dig right here looks like but several hours later, there's no sign of the cable, despite energetic excavations and the insistent swing of the dowsing rods. That shows right where it should be. He tries another spot, but they're still in a real hole. Kind of embarrassing, you know, to not find it. <laughs> As the shadows lengthen over Carmel Valley, he still can't find the wire. Next morning, Pacific Bell send in high technology help. It does the job in minutes. Well, I found what I was digging for. Yeah. Is it out there? It's out here, uh, Tommy. Well, I must have picked up this water line and this sewer line. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, it's right there. Well, let's dig it up there. I found it. Yeah, there it is. Oh, Boy, that sure was deep. Yeah. There it is. Now it don't move. He was been wrong before, and it won't be this last time, probably, but most of the time, we'll find the wire with the dowsing. I still believe that dowsing works, and I've been doing it a lot of years, and I'm going to keep it up. I believe that dowsers, like racing tipsters, remember their successes and conveniently forget their failures. All the same, I think that there may be something to dowsing. Biologists know that some animals can detect water even when there's no visible trace of it. Perhaps a few people share this ability, as a primitive survival from a time when it could have been a matter of life and death. So, I'd like to see Randy's experiment repeated on a larger scale. It could be important to learn whether dowsing is superstition or genuine science. <laughs> Stay with Arthur C. Clarke next on Discovery as he attempts to reveal the truth behind legends of monsters from the deep.